Welcome back! As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, here for your daily dose of the roars as we scream about the stupid stuff going on in the world of technology. Do remember I do these videos in order to support SiliconDojo.com, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We're having a class coming up on AI computer vision using something called Moondream uh, next week. We're going to have another class coming up on pushing AI to the edge with Raspberry Pis coming up at the beginning of January. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule at SiliconDojo.com. If you want to support free technology education, there's a donor box link down below and with that oh you know you know i do have to say i do have to say trump said trump said we would win so much we would get tired of winning i mean i guess <clears throat> i mean if we're if we're winning the game of losing i guess i am getting tired of winning we lose so many wars we lose so many wars <laughs> We lost Vietnam, we lost uh, Iraq, we lost Afghanistan, we lost the war on, on uh, poverty, we lost the war on crime, we lost the war on drugs, we're losing the war on AI. We're just, we're just the best at losing wars. I do, I do feel like uh, future presidents uh, need to find a PR person to come up with a new word for the, the things that they want to do. They really need to stop using the war on because we keep losing those. So anyways, I think this is kind of an interesting story basically about China and their open source models. You know, we were told China, China's scary, whatever else, uh, but they're coming out with their open source models, right? Uh, coming from the South China Morning Post, China's open source models make up 30% of global AI usage led by Quinn and DeepSeek. So this is gonna be an interesting thing going forward and basically seeing how the AI arms race, you know, shakes out between the US and China. Spoiler, we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose. Um, and basically to see how fast this is going badly uh, for us, right? So the big thing is we're not supposed to allow China to get our artificial intelligence because we believe that their civilization has progressed far enough. The, idi the idiocy just got to an, uh, just an insane level under the Biden administration. He was putting in these, these, uh, these uh, AI Oh, diffusion rules are called AI diffusion rules. At one point, he wanted to put export controls on models, not export controls on wafers or export controls on full fledged GPUs or export controls on full fledged servers or whatever else. He literally he had so little clue about how the world of technology works. He wanted to put export controls on models themselves. And God bless, if you can figure out how to block FTP on a global scale, you, you will be the dictator for the next generation. But anyways, right, that, that's the idiocy. But one of the big things going on with this whole AI thing is it, the, the idea is that the, uni the United States really believes in intellectual property rights, right? If you create something, you should have a monopoly on that idea for a period of time. Uh, China is fundamentally different. They believe in execution, shipping the fucking product, right? So there, uh, they're putting a lot of stuff out in the, uh, the open source community. So here, we have a lot of proprietary information there they have a lot of open source and i mean it doesn't really seem like it comes as a shock that the the open source is basically going to win out at the end of the day right if if you need to pay somebody else for infrastructure to run an open source model then you can pay for infrastructure for somebody else to run an open source model if you have the infrastructure to run an open source model then you run the open source model but then at the end of the day you're using the same model you you understand how to how to send the prompts you understand uh, what the responses uh, back look like and how to parse them properly um, and the whole nine yards this is just yeah I don't I don't understand how we think we're gonna win this particular one so uh, so yeah uh, in a very short order it appears that their uh, Chinese open source models are now 30% of the global use uh, so China's open source AI models accounted for nearly 30% of total global use of the technology while Chinese language prompts ranked second in token volume behind English according to a report and so yeah that probably makes sense right there's there's 1.4 billion Chinese people maybe maybe a lot of people outside of China don't speak Chinese but inside China a lot of them do so English being first and Chinese being second makes sense. The other thing to be thinking about too, as we lose this AI war, right? As our politicians have these devastating destructive policies uh, going into place is what happens and when more and more stuff starts being written in Chinese. 
All right, one of the things I've talked about before is uh, John F. Kennedy, JFK, right? He, he created the most powerful force uh, for empire uh, our country had ever known. And when I talk about that, people think I'm talking about the Navy SEALs. And here's the thing. The Navy SEALs are a bunch of fucking panty waste, right? They, they couldn't... What the fuck are a bunch of Navy SEALs going to do other than put some bullets in people's heads? You know the real, the real power of empire? The fucking Peace Corps. Right? Peace Corps came in there with their little fucking pocket protectors. Those fucking nerds bitch smacked SEAL Team 6. Right? SEAL Team 6 is still crying from the fact that they are they are not as valuable for Empire as the goddamn Peace Corps is. And the reason the Peace Corps is so valuable for Empire is once you get people to start talking in your language, you own them. You own them. Different languages have different cultures, right? Have different priorities, just how it is, right? Because of those different priorities, languages get created in order to, to allow for those priorities to be dealt with, right? So here's the thing, the English language was created for certain priorities. You start, you start convincing other people to speak our language and especially make it the, the preeminent language. And all of a sudden, not only are they speaking in your language, but all of a sudden concepts disappear. Right? How many times have you talked to somebody who's not a who's not a native English speaker? Right? Learn some other, and they're like, there, "There's there's no real translation for this idea. There's no real translation for this word. It's kind of sort of like, and imagine if you can do it's kind of sort of like to an entire somebody else's entire civilization." And so it becomes interesting, right? As we lose this war because our politicians are idiots. We don't have to lose this war. We don't have to be in a war. You know how not to lose a war? Don't get into it in the first place. But anyways, right? Because we're losing this war, an interesting question comes up, right? Jensen, Jensen Wong came out and said, you know, in the entire world, entire world, 50% of AI researchers are Chinese in China. What, what happens when all the documentation is written in Chinese? What happens when any time you want to get something done, it's got to be in Chinese? How does that dynamic change? Again, not just all of societies, but especially with our field. I mean, think about that. Like when I go to learn Python, right? When I'm coding Python, uh, Python here. I don't know. I just got the stupid this 2012 MacBook Pro. I'm very proud of my 2012 MacBook Pro that's sitting on my desk. Where's my, where's my code? Anyways, there we go. I want to code. Want to code my 2012 MacBook Pro? Do you do you ever think like when you're when you're learning to code and it's such a pain in the ass? What if what if these words were in a different language? What if I had to learn how to write Python in Spanish instead of model? It was Modelo. So not only did I have to understand to put model equals, I would have to remember to put Modelo equals, right? And then think about then think about this. What if not only is it in a different language? but he's a different character set. What if I had to remember that squiggle, squiggle, squiggle equals line dot, squiggle dot? How much more difficult would that be for you to spin up your startup company if all of your coders, they didn't just have to learn Python or Node or whatever the latest thing was, they had to learn squiggles. Anyways, uh, this year's surge in open source large language uh, model usage around the world has been fueled by Chinese developed systems, including Alibaba groups uh, holding Quinn family of models, DeepSeek's V3, and Moonshot AI's Kim K2, according to a recently published report by OpenRouter, a third party AI model aggregator, and venture capital firm Anderson Horowitz. Uh, proprietary uh, Western models, such as OpenAI's GPT 4.0 and GPT 5, remained dominant with a 70% global market share. But think about this, right? So we we still we still number one. We still number one. But think at seventy percent, and basically in basically a year, they have come out of almost nowhere to go from us being damn near a hundred percent to down being in seventy percent that quick. 
according to the empirical study of 100 trillion tokens by Open Router, Chinese open source LLMs share started from a low base of 1.2% in late, in late 2024 to reach nearly 30% over a few months this year. So that's what I'm talking about, uh, the speed of what is happening here. Now, quote, China has emerged as a major force not only through domestic consumption, but also by producing globally competitive models, the report said. Uh, which, yes, uh, again, I think this makes a lot of sense, right? One of the big things going on right now is this whole idea, you should not trust China, you should trust the United States. Why? Who the hell knows? Like at the, at the exact same time, we're saying you should not trust China, you should trust the United States. Uh, our president is calling Canada, the 51st state, uh, is threatening to invade Greenland uh, and has gotten us into an illegal war uh, where we're murdering people uh, committing, uh, while we're committing war crimes. So, so, so the, re the reason you as an Argentinian, the reason you as a Kenyan, the reason you as an Indian or Sri Lankan or, or, or Australian, the, re the reason that you should go with our tech stack and not their tech stack is because we're the good guys. Yeah, I'm not, <clears throat> not sure how, how far that argument is going to go, uh, you know, in the modern world especially with the current administration in place. Especially with the current administration that just does not seem to give two shits about war crimes. You're just like, what is it? They got the whole thing with the Venezuelans, the Venezuelans and the boats, the whole double tap thing, right? There was, a, there was a boat with Venezuelans. Maybe they were bringing drugs, maybe not. Anyways, they shoot a missile. They spend like a million dollars to hit a fucking, uh, a speedboat with a missile, which is its own thing. Anyways, boat goes boom. Two people, sorry, two people survive. They're, they're, they're grappling onto the boat, trying to figure out what the hell to do next. And then, and then our administration uh, gives the go-ahead to murder the fuckers. Because for, some, because for some reason, that's considered just A-OK, -okay, right? Prisoners of, prisoners of war, all of that kind of stuff, completely going the fuck out the window. But hey, we're the we're the good ones. We are the good ones. So, anyways, uh, it'll be cur it'll be curious to see uh, how this goes in the future. And, you know, especially as I've been talking about the the value proposition uh, for these AI models uh, plateauing. Like just simply, uh, legitimately, the the models are plateauing. Like there's this big push again for the frontier models. OpenAI is doing Code Red. All these other companies are pushing farther and farther for frontier models. And one of the arguments I make is, yeah, they're fine. Don't get me wrong. Uh, make iterative improvements, right? I'm not. I'm never going to complain that the iPhone this year is a little bit better than the iPhone last year. I can also tell you about the last time I really cared was the iPhone 10. <laughs> like they're coming out with the iPhone 18, and the last major improvement, I, like that was really cool, was honestly the iPhone 10. I'm not anti the major. The, iterative improvements, but it's not that big a deal. One of the things I see with a lot of these models is like, it's just, it's just iterative improvements, right? They, they have to, they have tests that they understand. And then they come back with these spreadsheets to say which model did better on these, you know, artificial tests. And I think for most people, we're finally getting the point that the models are fine. Like I like, so for, uh, for Silicon Dojo, uh, there's the open source model from, uh, from OpenAI called GPT hyphen OSS. Uh, so I use a 16 uh, B uh, version of that. I think it's 16 B, maybe it's 14 B. Anyways, I use a version of that uh, for doing the classes to show how things work. Uh, it spits back structured data. It's great at spitting back structured data. It's great at doing a lot of other tasks. And so like, if you, if you told me, hey, uh, OpenAI came out with a better, open source version. I'm not going to say no to it. I'll upgrade it. I also don't actually care that much, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's like fine. It's fine. And so what'll be interesting is when we get to this world where America is pushing the proprietary model, China's pushing the open source model, and at the exact same time, all these models kind of plateau with, with the actual value propositions there, um, it will become an interesting thing to see uh, who wins that particular fight. Uh, China. <laughs> Just spoiler, China's gonna win this particular fight. Because that's what I look at with it. Because I mean, that's the whole thing. Like when you have open source models, is because with a, a lot of when you're designing systems, you you need you need to have faith that the inputs and the outputs essentially are gonna stay the same. So this hasn't mattered, right? If you, if you do SQL statements, right, you do see input output. It's all gonna be the same. Right, one of the big issues with LLMs, being these big big issues with the models, 
it's since it is this weird statistical thing of how it understands what you're asking and how it tries to give you a response. So the issue the issue you get into in this world is that is that different models can be the same or better, but based off of how they format the response that's coming back to you, that that is the thing that might actually cause you uh, the major issue. Right. And so that's where it's like if I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about building out my infrastructure. And here's the thing. I don't I don't know if I want to have local a local uh, server room or whatever, or I'm going to go with cloud. But here's the thing. Right. If, if I can do te- if I can do testing using an open source model to see how things work. I'm like, oh, OK. And then I can scale up using that exact same model, knowing what the performance and everything else is else is going to look like. And I can simply just scale up on that, right? Go from one GPU server to maybe 20 GPU servers, right? Then I get to that 20 GPU thing. I've run through my entire budget, so I've got to go cry to the CFO. And that at that point, I can say, this is what we're looking at doing. Do we, do we, do we build our own hardware infrastructure? And here's, here's the depreciation schedule and the rest of it. Or do we go with a cloud provider and deploy there? But that's the thing. Like if you use an open source model, whether you're running it locally or whether you're running it on AWS or whether you're running it on Alibaba, it's the same fucking model no matter where you run it. So you're not locked in and it gives you, it gives you that ability to build out. That's a valuable thing about the open source community. And think about that based off of the proprietary systems that we see, where again, with OpenAI, with their GPT-5, and their shit changing every like two days or whatever, with Anthropic or with Mistral or these other companies, do you, do you see it in the same way from a viability standpoint, especially for large companies? And I think that's why I, th- I think open source will simply win at the end of the day because the, op- the open source models that already exist are fucking fine. If, if they do not improve them one iota, they'll be fucking fine. Right. And so at that point, again, when you start thinking about deployments and build outs and all of that kind of thing, I just don't see how open source doesn't win. And so if you look at it. China is focused on open source. U.S. is focused on closed source, proprietary. Even even Meta, right? I've talked about this with Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Mark Zuckerberg, their new their new model. So they've had the Llama model. Their Llama model was quote unquote open source. It wasn't open source, but it was good enough. It was free for anybody who didn't have 750 million active users per month or whatever. It was free, not open source. But anyways, what's interesting with Meta, they're having their new model come out called Avocado, and they're actually going to the proprietary world. So one of the curious things, if you if you look at the American design methodology or whatever, we are going ever more proprietary. We're actually going deeper into proprietary, where China is going deeper into open source. And then you start thinking about, you know, what is what is the most used operating system in the entire world? And it's not Windows, and it's not Mac, it'd be Linux. Right? Is is China going to create the Linux of LLMs essentially? Anyways, that's where we're going. So uh, kind of open source models make up 30% of global AI usage, up from like one point whatever percent not that long ago. How do you how do you think this is going? Do you, do you think the presidents of the United States need to come up with a new phrase and get rid of the war on X? Because we're just not doing very good at that. I don't know. Put your thoughts down below. Uh, do remember, I do these videos in order to support SiliconDojo.com, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on computer vision using an AI model called Moon Dream. That'll be next week. We have another class coming up on uh, pushing AI to the edge with Raspberry Pis. Another few weeks. If you're interested in those, take a look at our schedule at SiliconDojo.com. If you want to support free technology education, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.